Well, I want to thank you very much. And, Sarah, thank you for the wonderful endorsement. And uh, Arkansas is in very good hands. It's a great place. It's a great state. Florida, great state. We love to be with you. And I didn't have to come too far. I'm thrilled to be here in the heart of Miami with thousands of proud, hardworking, God-fearing American patriots. That's what you are. Just think of it. Seven years ago tonight, on November 8, 2016, the American people delivered the greatest election victory probably that the world has ever seen. Probably so. The only one that's going to be more important is the one that's coming up in one year from now. It's going to be more important, I think. On that magnificent day, you didn't just crush the dreams of a person that we used to call crooked Hillary Clinton. We don't call her that anymore. We call her beautiful Hillary. Because we use the word crooked for the president because he's crooked as you get. You stood up and smashed the grip of the globalists, the warmongers, the open borders lobby, the outsourcers, and all of the liars and leeches who had been sucking the life and blood right out of our country for years and years. And for four great years, we dealt the radical left maniacs and in special interests, one historic defeat after another, because we put America first. It's very simple. They weren't too happy about it either, were they? Every day since our 2016 victory, that was some year, the sick political class we defeated has been trying to scratch and claw their way back into total control over our lives. They are working so hard. It's actually all they're good at. They're bad at policy. They're bad at everything, but they're only good at that. And they're really great at cheating in elections, but we're not going to let that happen. They have put you, me, my family, and our country through hell. But in the end, they will fail and we will win because we will never stop fighting to save the America we love. Crooked Joe Biden and the radical left Democrats are turning the United States into communist Cuba. And you know, because we have a lot of great Cubans here, we have some great Cubans here. And nobody ever did more for Americans who love Cuba than a gentleman named Donald J. Trump when he was president. He had it going beautifully. You are going to be taking it over very quickly. And then they blew it. What they've done is so terrible in the last three years with respect to Cuba. We had it just where we wanted it. It was all set to go, and they blew it. They blew it so badly. Just like the Cuban regime, the Biden regime, is trying to put their political opponents in jail, shutting down free speech, taking bribes and kickbacks to enrich themselves and their very spoiled children. My children aren't so spoiled, are they, huh? Rigging and cheating in elections, using the fake news media to cover up their colossal incompetence and stupidity, what they're doing, what they've done to our country. Nobody can even believe it and using the fear tactics of a police state, because that's what we've become, to persecute Christians and especially Catholics. What's going on with Catholics? They're after Catholics. What have Catholics done? They're after Catholics, aren't they? Any Catholic or Christian that votes for a Democrat, I have to say, you're fools if you do that. You're fools. That's what they're doing is unthinkable. But we're here tonight to declare that Crooked Joe Biden's Banana Republic ends on November 5th, 2024. It ends. 
As you know, Biden and the radical left Democrats claim to be defending democracy. He's always talking about democracy. He doesn't know what the word means. He can't define it. Define it for us, Joe. Joe, what does MAGA stand for, Joe? Tell me. I don't know. I don't know. We'll ask him that during a debate. What does MAGA stand for? I don't know. But like power-hungry regimes all over the world, just because they put the word democratic in their name does not make it true. The radical left Democrat communists are against voter ID. Therefore, open borders. How about that? Open borders where criminals come in from all over the world. Therefore, massive censorship and blacklisting. Therefore, shredding the Constitution, gutting the rule of law and threatening their political opponents with violence and ruin. Remember, we are not the ones endangering American democracy. We are the ones saving American democracy. We are saving it from these very terrible people. If you don't want to let the communists destroy America like they destroyed Cuba, Venezuela, Nicaragua, and so many other countries, you need to send a message by voting crooked Joe Biden and all of his friends the people that are actually really running our country. And every last Democrat, get them the hell out of office. We have to get them out. Because this race is not just about beating Crooked Joe. It's about defeating the entire rotten, corrupt, and tyrannical establishment right now that you have in Washington, D.C. Nobody thought we'd see this. This election will decide whether power in America belongs to them forever or whether it belongs to you, the men and women who make this country great, who make this country run. 2024 is our final battle. Stand with me in the fight. We will finish the job that we started so brilliantly seven years ago. We never had a country like we had just three years ago, the job we did. We did things that nobody thought were possible. With your vote, we are going to win the Florida primary for a third straight time. We are going to win this wonderful state in a landslide like we have done right from the beginning. Remember, you know, you got to remember, we got 1.2 million more votes than Ron DeSanctimonious. You know that, right? Everyone says, oh, he did so well. He did well because I endorsed him. That's the only reason he was, he was gone. But we got 1.2 million more votes than Ron DeSanctis, as NBC called him the other day. Ladies and gentlemen, Governor Ron DeSanctis. That's called good branding, isn't it? Did we do a good job? And we're going to make America great again, greater than ever before. That's what's going to happen. And job number one is to make America safe again. For four straight years under the Trump administration, I kept America safe. I kept Israel safe. I kept Ukraine safe. And I kept the world safe. Israel, Ukraine would have never happened under the Trump administration. There was no chance it would have happened. Those two events alone would have never happened. Inflation would have never happened, would have never happened. It was caused by stupid people on energy policy. But we'll get it back really fast. Before it took office, there was a terrorist attack seemingly every week. People were getting massacred left and right, including the Pulse nightclub murders in Orlando. You remember that, how horrible that was? With me in the White House, we stopped it cold. Nothing happened for four years. Nothing happened. I completely obliterated the ISIS territorial caliphate. They said that couldn't be done. And I terminated its founder and leader who was trying to rebuild it again, al-Baghdadi. And we also ended the life of the world's top terrorist, top terrorist ever, probably, Qasem Soleimani. The father of the roadside bomb, when you see young men and women on the streets where they have no legs, their arms are wiped out, their face, everything, he was the one. Ninety-four percent of it was all done by Soleimani. He's no longer with us. 
And here in the United States, I implemented a strong, powerful, really incredible travel ban. They call it the Trump travel ban. And I said, that's okay if you want to do that, to keep radical Islamic terrorists out of our country. And we did. We did. When countries were sending their young, strong people that had bad intentions, we didn't let them do it. And the countries paid hell for it, but we kept it and we had no problems. And then you look at what's been taking place now and you look at the millions and millions of people that are coming into our country totally unchecked. Nobody knows who they are. But under the crooked Joe Biden, we were weak and soft and in danger like never before. And that continues. And, you know, we have an election that's coming up very quickly, but one year is a long time. The destruction that they've done to our country one year seems like it's quick, but it's not. It's a long time for them to continue because we're close to having no country at all. And we're also close to being in World War III, a war that you've never even conceived or thought about. But we're very close. You know, they have a hat. I saw it the other day. It said Trump was right about everything. And I said, well, that's a big statement. And then you think about it. And I sort of was right about everything. Russia, Russia, Russia hoax, the whole thing. Our country has never seen the likes of what you witnessed in America last weekend with the menacing mobs of Hamas supporters chanting their jihad slogans in the streets of our cities. Uh, in Washington, D.C., pro-jihadist demonstrators climbed up the fence in front of the White House. Excuse me, that I built. I built it. You know, the fence wasn't too good. The one that they had up there was falling apart. And we built it. Titanium, it's the strongest stuff. And they damaged the fence and they damaged police vehicles. They desecrated statues of Ben Franklin and other great heroes of our country. And they shouted, Allah Akbar while calling the barbaric Hamas terrorists martyrs, they were saying martyrs. In times like these, you can't afford to have a president who wants to be politically correct. We have to do things properly. We cannot have an administration that takes foreign policy advice from Ilhan Omar or Rashida Tlaib. Can't do that. Can't do that. AOC plus three, right? AOC plus three. But that's a movement that's growing. On day one, we will restore the Trump travel ban on entry from terror plague countries. And we will implement strict vetting and ideological screening for all new entrants into our country. We don't do that at all now. Anybody can come in. Anybody can come in. When people want to go and take the test, where do I learn to take the test? People say to them, you don't have to take any tests. Just go to the southern border and walk in. You don't have to bother with us. You know, we had a good, strong policy. We wanted people to come to our country, but we wanted them to come in legally, legally. If you hate America, if you want to abolish Israel, if you sympathize with jihadists, then we don't want you in our country, and we are not going to let you come into our country. To all the resident aliens who joined in the pro-jihadist protests and became very violent and started destroying our capital and many other places, we put you on notice. Come 2025, we will find you and we will deport you. You know, during my term, we had a little bit of a problem with people coming into Washington and want to knock down all of our statues to our great heroes, in many cases, great heroes. But these were beautiful works of art, and they represented Washington. They represented our history. And they came in, and they started getting more and more. Then all of a sudden, they started talking about taking down Lincoln and taking down George Washington and Jefferson. They wanted to knock down the Jefferson Memorial, little things like that. And I was able to find an old law, because only old laws are tough. Our current laws are weak. They're weak. They're for a weak country. They're for people that don't want to be told what to do properly. And we found this old law, 
And I immediately had a press conference. I signed it and I enacted it first time in almost 100 years. And it said, if you so much as touch one of our statues or memorials, you go to jail for 10 years with no probation, no anything. You go for 10 years. And you all remember that. And as soon as I signed it, everybody ran away. That was the end. We had, we had no problem. I'll never forget we signed it. There were people on top of one of the most beautiful statues in Washington, and they had ropes. You know what I'm talking about? And they were all set to do something, and they heard about this, and they got off that thing so fast, you wouldn't believe. And they all left. We ended the problem. I will also quickly cancel the student visas of all Hamas sympathizers on college campuses, which have been infested with radicalism like never before, college campuses. On day one, I will stop the invasion of our southern border. We will stop it. One point, think of this, 1.5 million people, in my opinion, are coming in every two months. I think the number is going to end up being not 3 million people, not 5, not 7, not 10 that you hear. The real number, you know, talking about gotaways. You know what the gotaways are? Many, many times the ones they catch. I think the number is going to be more than 15 million people, which is larger than New York State. Thank you. Under Biden, the United States has become the dumping ground of the world. Inmates are being emptied out of their prisons, insane asylums and mental institutions, and they're pouring into the United States. Think of it. Empty, insane asylums. That's a bad word. My people say, please don't use those words, sir. Why? Because it's so nasty. Well, that's true. Now, an insane asylum is Silence of the Lambs. Anybody ever hear of Hannibal Lecter? He was a nice fellow, but that's what's coming into our country right now. And mental institutions, which is a number of degrees below that. And prisons and jails is a little difference. And they're coming in at levels never seen before, probably never seen before in any country. There's never been anything like this. Our country is being invaded. This is an invasion. It's an invasion. A few months ago, right here in Florida, a sadistic illegal alien in Lee County was charged with kidnapping a woman from a nightclub, dragging her into the woods, beating her, raping her, and leaving her with what were called bone-chilling injuries so bad that she's still trying to recover, and she's still very close to death. In Alabama, a previously deported illegal alien was charged with savagely murdering, just absolutely murdering a 34-year-old woman and her 14-year-old son before dismembering their bodies while holding captive the woman's 12-year-old daughter. Who watched? This is the kind of monstrosity you'd expect from terrorists in the Middle East, but it's happening right here because of crooked Joe Biden. It's right here. Florida, in our country, all over our country. On day one, I will terminate every open borders policy of the Biden administration. And we will begin the largest domestic deportation operation in American history. So sad we even have to talk about this. Wouldn't it be great if we could just talk about fixing our country, making it great without having to do all this? But we have no choice. We have bad people, terrorists at levels that nobody's ever seen. I saw a chart the other day on one of the networks, one of the fake news networks. They're all fake news now. They're all fake. They're all fake news. They put commercials on that are so bad, even when they're with you, and then they put commercials on that are so bad and ridiculous. But I saw a chart that in 2019, there were no terrorists coming in, zero. And I said, it must be wrong, it can't be. But they had actually zero. And then the following year, they had many, many, many. Once Biden took over, the terrorists have flooded into our country. And bad things are happening. When you see from China, Thousands and thousands of young, strong men coming into our country. What's that all about? When you see from the Middle East, all over the Middle East, young, strong men, not to insult women, 
but young, strong men are flooding our country. They've got something in mind. There's something in mind. And in many cases, these are the same people that did the attack on Israel just a few weeks ago. These are the same people. And for any radical left charity, nonprofit, or so-called aid organization supporting the caravans, a name I came up with. And by the way, right now, you have the largest caravan that anybody has ever seen walking through Mexico and making its way into your country. It's a disgrace. We will prosecute them for their participation in human trafficking, child smuggling, and every other crime that we can find. I will also use Title 42 to end the child trafficking crisis by returning all trafficked children to their families in their home countries immediately back to their parents where they were stolen from their parents. You saw the movie Freedom. They were stolen from their parents. It's no wonder crooked Joe Biden and the far left lunatics are desperate to stop us by any means necessary. They're weaponizing law enforcement for high level election interference. That's what it is. They want to damage our name and my name so we don't quite we don't quite get over that little threshold that we have to. But right now, our numbers are higher than they've ever been. You see that the poll numbers. We're beating them so badly in the polls. You probably saw last week the New York Times, no big fan of mine, I would say. And the Siena poll, very respected, of the general election. We are leading crooked Joe Biden in almost all of the swing states. In Pennsylvania, we're up four. In Michigan, we're up five. In Arizona, we're up five. In Georgia, we're up six. In Nevada, we're up 11 points. And nationally, we're up at numbers that, frankly, nobody's, uh, nobody's seen before. Nobody has seen it before. And I don't think I've changed that much. But when you look at the difference between what we did, the success that we had, just three years ago, with the energy independence and even dominance, all of the things that we had, and then you look at what's happening right now, it's a, it's a big contrast. We're proud to see that these great numbers are led by surging support from Hispanic Americans, African Americans, and young people. How about that? In the primary, we're leading the field with an average of 61 percent for Trump. And you have about, what, seven or eight candidates left? I think they're at a debate tonight. Nobody's talking about it. Everybody's watching. So it's 61 percent for your favorite president, me, and 10 percent for Ron DeSanctimonious, and 7 percent for Birdbrain. You know Birdbrain? <laughs> I will never run against him. He is a great president. I will never, ever run against him, said Bird Brain. I will not run against him. He was one of the greatest presidents in the history of our country. And then about three months later, she goes, I've decided to run. This, this is the craziest business politic. They said to me at one point, who's worse, business people or politicians? And I said, because this was very early, and I said, definitely business people are worse. Then after about three or four months of Russia, 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 uh, pencil neck Adam Schiff. You know, he's got the smallest neck I've ever seen. It's like, it's like the size of a finger. I don't know how it holds up his head, which is oversized. I don't know how it holds it up. It's like a miracle. It's an engineering marvel. Adam, Adam Shifty Schiff. But after dealing with Pelosi, who's crazy, by the way, she's nuts. After dealing with all of these people that I had to deal with, with the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax, every hoax that you could imagine, I say, I called up the people that I said, I think business are worse, because that was very early. That was like my first week I said that. And I said, I'm changing my mind. The worst people, the worst by far, are politicians. They are far away. They're more deceptive. They're liars. They're much more disloyal. 
So I give the business people, I, I will tell you, you're much nicer and much kinder and much softer than politicians. Our nation is in very serious trouble. And it's time for the Republican establishment to stop wasting time and resources trying to push weak and ineffective rhinos and never Trumpers that nobody wants and nobody's going to vote for. I watch these guys coming in. I had this thing and I was watching these guys. They're not watchable. You know, the last debate was the lowest rated debate in the history of politics. So, so therefore, do you think we did the right thing by not participating? Somebody said, oh, some one of the dumber ones. He doesn't have the courage to stand up. Well, listen, I'm standing in front of tens of thousands of people right now, and it's on television. That's a hell of a lot harder to do than a debate. That's a hell of a lot harder. Now, I would say standing up here in this beautiful podium, you know, a podium where these stairs are not obvious enough. Biden could never get off. <laughs> now, but think of it. Here's a guy can't find or figure out a way to get off a stage with about five sets of stairs. I got one here. I got one there. I have one there. I have one here. And you could even jump off the front if you have to. He can't figure it out. So he can't find out how to get off the stage and he would also by the way half of the times he falls and they and listen <laughs> so he can't get off the stage he can't put two sentences together and he's in charge of our nuclear talks this is the closest we've ever been to World War III. This is the closest, and I hope that one's wrong. And that's not a prediction, because I would never make that prediction. It's too horrible a thing to say. But we have never been closer to World War III, and only for one reason. We have incompetent people talking on our behalf. You know, when you deal with China, President Xi, and North Korea, Kim Jong-un, and Russia, Putin, you deal with all these people, the press hates when I say they're smart. He said they were smart. Well, what am I supposed to say? They're stupid people. Kim Jong-un leads 1.4 billion people. And there's no doubt about who the boss is. And they want me to say, he's not an intelligent man. They get very personal when I say that because they're fake news. That's why they do that. They're fake. They're fake people. And they're hurting our country very badly. You know, when that poll came out, I watched a certain anchor on ABC, who truly doesn't have it, how they pick this guy as an egg. And he was almost crying when he saw the numbers in the New York Times poll, because it has us up by 10, 11 points, and uh, beating Biden everywhere with women, with everything. Women, I'm finally doing something. I always felt I did well with women, because women want security, right? Women want security. Women. I'm winning with young people. I thought I'd do well with young people. Look at the people here. They're all young people. They're all young and beautiful. They're young people. Look at that. So we're doing well with every category. And this guy was up on ABC and he was saying, do you know what this means? You know, yeah, it means we're going to have strong borders, great education. You're going to be able to buy a house. We're going to have interest rates come down. We're going to have a great military. We're going to have safety and security. It means everything. It means we're going to have a country because you're not going to have a country left. If we don't win this election, you're not going to have a country left. I'm telling you, this country is going to hell. It's going to hell. And you know it, and we know it. And I hate to say it, because it's a very negative thought, I would say. Look at the front row Joes. Will you stand up? These people, they follow me all over the place. They're the greatest. But you know what? They love our country. How many of, How many now? Tell me. 32. That's nothing compared to... <laughs> 65, 76, 98. They are great. They love our country.
And they must be doing very well because they travel all over the place. You guys, you got to be making a lot of money, right? Huh? Well, we love you, too. And everybody here loves you, too, because you know what? You love our country. And that's what we want. The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election of 2020, and we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election of 2024. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, they indicted me. Can you believe my father and mother are looking down, son? How did that happen? We're so proud of you, son. How did that happen? That wasn't a word that was in. But this is a political indictment. This is a Biden indictment. Even that stupid trial going on in New York, which has been totally discredited. Everybody's been discredited. That's all comes out of the White House. That's to discourage people from voting. That's to hurt us. The only difference is we have a big voice. We're a very big voice. This is the greatest movement in the history of politics. And we have a great voice, and we're not going to let them get away with it. But every time I'm indicted, I consider it a great badge of honor, because I'm being indicted for you. Thanks a lot, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm being indicted for you. And never forget, our enemies want to take away my freedom, because I will never, ever, ever let them take away your freedom. I won't let it happen. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. I will never let them do it. And in the end, they're not after me. They're after you. I just happen to be standing in their way. And that's true. That's true. You know, it is true, though. When you look at these crowds, it's crazy. If we had one of these candidates, to pick the best one, whoever that is. I don't know that you have a best one. Well, one of them said last week that on the stage that President Trump is the greatest president in many generations. I sort of like him. You know who that is, right? I sort of, I mean, how can I dislike him? He's so nice. A lot of people say that, why are you running? Well, he said, I'm a younger version, and it's okay to say, but we want the older version, right? But that's okay to say. And you know, you got to remember, Biden's not too old. That's not his problem. He's too incompetent. He's not old. So many people, I know a man that fought all his life to make money, and he became a billionaire from 80 to 90. From 80 years old to 90, he made all of his money, became a very rich man, fought his whole life, and he became, he made all of his money. Uh, some of the greatest leaders in history have been way over 80. Some of the people I know, some of the smartest people, I have one of them here tonight. He's one of the most incredible businessmen in the world. And I won't say he's over 80, but let's say he's right around. I don't want to insult him. The great Ike Perlmutter, he's right over here. He's one of the greatest businessmen. He owned Marvel. He sold it to Disney. He's not too happy with Disney going woke, I will tell you. But he's one of the greatest businessmen. And he is uh, here with Lori. We have some incredible businessmen and businesswomen with us tonight. And some of them are over 80 years old, and they're just as sharp. I would say a couple of them are sharper now than they were 15 years ago. I don't remember them being that sharp. But we have people, and he's not, you know, they like to say that. They like to say that because they think, you know, they're trying to say, well, Trump maybe isn't that far behind. I think I'm really far behind. I think I'm really way far. But his problem is not age. They keep saying that. His problem is that he's grossly incompetent. And by the way, 25 years ago, he was incompetent, too. He had the worst foreign policy judgment of any human being. And the Secretary of State said it. The Secretary of Defense said it. We're pleased to be joined tonight by some really incredible people. A woman who ran a fantastic race for governor of Arizona. And they said, come on Tuesday. Come, you know, Republicans, rightfully, they like to come on Tuesday to vote. They don't like sending out their ballots into the open atmosphere and maybe never seeing them again. That happens. But she really uh, she did, ran a great campaign. And on Tuesday, they had lines that were miles long in Arizona. Miles. And it was, and it was hot. 
And unfortunately, over 50 percent of the machines in the Republican areas only didn't work. So they always find something. That's why they ask me. The first question they ask me is, sir, how do you take it? How do you do it? How do you wake up in the morning? How do you go through it? They're after you like nobody's ever been after you before. They're persecuting you. I said, that's okay. I do it because I love it, because we're doing something so great. It's history. We're saving our country. It doesn't bother me at all. It doesn't bother me at all. And the second question I get, the second question I get is, will they do it again, sir? And you know what they mean. Will they do it again? Will they cheat again? Because they cheated like a bunch of dogs. Will they do it again? And we have the best everything. They're going to try. Look, that's all. You can't win elections when you say open borders, bad education, high interest rates, high taxes, tremendously big and impossible regulations, weak on Every nation not respected by anybody. The United States right now is a laughing stock all over the world. They don't they don't respect our president. They respected me. They don't respect our president. They don't respect anything about us. And then you're supposed to win an election. They win their elections by cheating. That's what they do. That's the only way. You can't win an election with open borders. And I don't even care if they're liberal as hell. When you see people pouring in from these mental institutions and from jails, from Africa, from Asia, from all over Europe, and from South America, it's not just South America, who the hell is going to vote? They cheat like hell. And I will say it, I've been indicted for saying it. And yet they used to say that about me in 2016. The election was rigged. The election was stolen. We're going to put up a slate of electors against Trump. You know who did that? Hillary. Thomas Jefferson did it many years ago, and it's been done many times. But in 2016, they even tried to get me on Alabama, and I won it by like 45 points. They said he cheated on Alabama. I said I won it by 45 points. I must have cheated by a lot. It's a great state with incredible people. But they did the same thing. When you look at Maxine Waters, watch the way she talks. Look at Tlaib today, what she said, the mouth, the horrible things she said. Look at some of the things that they say. They want you to walk into that restaurant and knock the hell out of them, they said. Right? All of the horrible things they said, and far worse than that. And nothing happens. But if we say peacefully and patriotically, oh, that's so threatening. These people are sick. They're sick. And we're not going to let them get away with it. We're not going to let it happen. And it happened once. It's not going to happen twice. You know, we did much better the second time than we did the first. I say it proudly. We did much better the second time. You know, we won in 2016. And then we got millions and millions of more votes a second time. Never happened to a president. Usually a president will, if they win, they'll win with less votes than they got the first time because people get bored. You know, he's a boring guy. I don't think I'm too boring, but he's a boring guy. I got the largest number of votes ever gotten by a sitting president. And I got the biggest increase. There's never been somebody. I went from 63 million to, I believe, over 75 million. And that's been recorded by them, not by me. How about the real number, okay? How about the real number? So we got like 12 million more votes. And the most before that was a couple of million votes. Obama, Barack Hussein Obama. Has anyone ever heard of him? Barack Hussein. Remember Rush Limbaugh? The great Rush Limbaugh gave him the Presidential Medal of Freedom, Rush. Remember, he used to go, Barack Hussein Obama. Barack Hussein Obama. But Obama got less votes the second time by a lot. I mean, he was uh, against a candidate that didn't do too well, but he got, he got far less votes. And uh, most presidents do, but some get a little bit more, but they get this much more. We got like millions and millions and millions of more votes. I was told that if we get 63 million, the original number, we can't lose. So we got millions of more votes than that, and they stole the election, but we're not going to let it happen again. We're not going to let it. We're going to be vigilant. We're going to be there. You know, I went home. I did like six or seven rallies 
uh, twice in the last couple of days. I did rallies. I started off in 82 degree weather. And by the time I finished at two o'clock in the morning, uh, the weather was about uh, seven degrees below zero. That's called, that's called, I would say pneumonia time, right? That was like, you start off wearing almost a bathing suit and you end up wearing fur coats in the same day, pneumonia. But uh, I went home and I did my job. I think, I thought we did great. And we had such great turnout. We had crowds like this. We had such great turnout. And after the turnout, all of the things that happened, all of that great turnout was so incredible. And I thought I did my job because I went home to watch it on television and I loved seeing. And at nine o'clock, it was over. 10 o'clock, it was really over. And then bad signals. We have found some additional votes. Oh, let's, here we go. Then at 3.02 in the morning, we saw some things happen. And then we watched it. We watched it be stolen. We watched it be stolen. Very serious, very serious thing. And again, we can't have a country if we don't have borders and if we don't have elections. If we don't have fair elections, we can't have, we can't have a successful, we can't have a successful border. We can't have. But Carrie Lake ran and she did great. She did phenomenal. It was a real, it was a part of our movement, but it was a whole big part of a movement in a great place. And, uh, they got there and they actually had to take her offline. Stand up, Carrie, please. They had to take her offline. Because it's Arizona and the weather is warm, to put it mildly. And she was standing on line and the police came. They said, I'm sorry, ma'am, you could be waiting for hours. We'd like to take you to another area to vote. They took her to a Democrat area. She walked in, voted and left. The lines were miles long. And many of those people had to leave. They had to leave because, you know, it's hot. They have little league games for their kids. They have doctor appointments. They have to leave no matter how much they love her or me. They had to leave. And she lost a very, very close race and went to court. And normally a judge would say, oh, wow. You know, it's an interesting thing with judges. And I have a lot of respect for a lot of judges. But an Obama, let's say Obama, because let's not even talk about Biden yet, but an Obama judge will say, you know, I'm an Obama judge and I'm proud of it. And I don't care what the merits of this case. You're in deep trouble. You, it's hard to win. Whereas a Republican judge, a lot of them, not all of them, they have some that and we just want fairness. But a Republican judge will say, oh, I want to show my fairness. So what I'll do is I'll screw the Republican and everyone will think I'm fair. It's so different. It's so different. But she had a situation where she had a judge and judges that, I mean, how obvious could that be? A large percentage of the machines just didn't work and people had to leave by the thousands they left. And she lost a very close election. And the, the courts just didn't want to hear it. And it's a shame. But she's a great person. Now she's running for the Senate. And I think, I think she's going to do great. And I saw a poll where you're leading today. It's going to be maybe a three-party race, a three-person race, and she's leading. Uh, also, Ambassador Carlos Trujillo. Carlos, where are you? Carlos Trujillo, who's been a tremendous supporter. Miami Dade County Commissioner Kevin Cabrera. Where is Kevin? He's around here. He's around here someplace. I don't know where he is, but he's around here someplace. State Senators Ileana Garcia and Anna Maria Rodriguez. State Representatives Juan Porras, Alina Garcia, and David Barrero. Where are they? Just stand up and thank you very much. And thank you for the endorsements. And thank you. We just that was a recent endorsement. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. We got a lot of endorsement. U.S. Senator Rick Scott just endorsed us the other day. It was a great endorsement. He'll do well. He's going to do very well. And your Congressman Carlos Jimenez, do you know him? Carlos Jimenez. Some people say Carlos Jimenez. Oh, you don't like him? Yeah. What's going on? Carlos, come on, Carlos. We got to get that straightened out. Carlos Jimenez. 
Really? Wow. Carlos. State Senator Debbie Mayfield, who's fantastic. And Representative Randy Fine just came across. Also Webster, Barnaby, Jessica Baker, Kevin Steele, and Mike Beltran are here with us and they endorsed and I want to thank them. A woman that opened a television show and got 28 million people. You don't know what that is. That's like unheard of. You know, that would have been maybe heard of years ago. They actually had more people watching television who was more honest in those days. They had real news. They used to have real news, not fake news. But she opened up a show and she said a couple of words tonight. I know, but I'll introduce her again. Roseanne Barr, 28 million people. 28 million, wherever you may be, Roseanne. She's an incredible person. A, f a man that I will never fight. I don't mind fighting people. Like Biden said, I want to take him to the back of the bar. And remember, he used to say, if I said that, they'd say it's a terrible thing. When he says it, it's okay. He wanted to take me to the back of the barn. If I went like this, <laughs> he'd fall down. But this guy is so tough. And he grew up in the streets of Miami, the streets, the really, the mean streets. One of the greatest fighters in the history of the UFC, a champ, a great guy. I promised him I wouldn't tell him what a great person he is because I'll destroy his image. But he's a great person. He loves what we've done. He loves MAGA. And he's all man. Jorge Masvidal. Where is Jorge? Where are you, Jorge? Where is he? Thank you. With his beautiful son. His son looks at me and he puts up his fist. He wants to fight me. The kid's this big. You know what they call that? Jeans, Jorge. That's jeans. He's got good jeans as a fighter. His kid, he's like about six years old. He puts up his uh, fists at me. And I didn't want any part of him because I know who produced him. Another man that's great, just like Jorge, but in a different world, the world of politics. He's a truly knowledgeable guy, and he's a great, great person. Roger Stone. I hear he's here. Roger Stone. He's a great guy and very, very talented guy. And a person who's really taken the country by storm, very powerful person, very strong person, very courageous person, a warrior, Laura Loomer. Laura, where are you? Thank you, Laura. Great job you do. And also, my son, Don. By the way, how did he do? Good? He's good, huh? He's good. He's a good, he's a good guy. He loves our country. He loves you. He's a good, a good guy. And Kimberly Guilfoyle, who's fantastic. Kimberly was on the five years ago, and she was always nice to me, so I never forgot that. She was one of the few. Rapper Lil Pump. Lil Pump. L-I-L. Lil. I said, how do you pronounce that? They said Lil. And a great pitcher for the New York Yankees. They call him the Hialeah Kid. Nestor Cortez. Where is Nestor? He's a great pitcher. Got that fastball. We're also honored to be joined by the Gold Star family members of three heroic Marines who gave their lives in the horrible, horrible, stupid, the way they did it. We're going to withdraw, but we're going to withdraw with dignity and with pride and with strength from Afghanistan, the way they withdrew. They took the military out first. How stupid are they? You know, we had nobody killed for 18 months in Afghanistan. I spoke to the head of the Taliban. The press went crazy when they heard. I spoke to him over the phone. Abdul, I said, Abdul, don't do it ever again. No more. You kill. He killed a lot of people under the Biden and Obama regime. And I called him. I said, no, don't do it. We'll hit you so hard. You're not going to believe how hard we're going to hit you. For 18 months, we had nobody killed. Not one soldier was even shot at, which was shocking. And we would have pulled out with dignity and strength. But instead of that, they moved the soldiers. You could ask a young child, should you take the soldiers out first or last? And he would say, oh, I think take them out last. But we took them out 
first because we had stupid people running things. The mother-in-law of fallen Sergeant Nicole G. Christy Shamblin, wherever Christy might be. Christy. And Christy, I've gotten to know the whole group. Thank you, Christy. Nice to see you. Huh? Great person. I got to know all of them. And they called me because they were so devastated by what happened, and they knew it was a horrible mistake, and the administration refused to do anything. I mean, the whole thing is just, it's just horrible. Those young people should all be alive. You know, they don't talk about, Christy, all of the 38 people that were so badly wounded, so horrifically wounded with arms and legs and just obliterated. The mother and brother of Corporal Humberto Sanchez, Coral, Priscino, Vital, and Axel Lauren. Thank you very much. Please. Hi. Hi, Axel. Hi, Axel. And the great father of Lance Corporal Kareem Nikoi. And that's Stephen Nikoi. Please stand, Stephen. Oh, you look good, Stephen. I had them as my guests at Mar-a-Lago, and we sit down, we sat down, we listened to music all night, right? And we thought about your loved ones. It was, uh, it was really a beautiful evening, actually. But uh, thank you, Stephen, very much for being here. And we love you all. It's a shame what, what happened there. It's just a shame. Everything, has Biden done anything right? Think of it, the border, the this, the economy is destroyed. Inflation is killing. What has he done right? There's not, we have tens of thousands of people tonight. There's not one person could stand up and say one good thing they've done. I don't think they've done everything. And we're laughed at. We're, we're just being humiliated all over the world. Nobody respects us. It's, it's too bad. No, we'll get back. We have to get back. Thank you. We have to. He says, you need. Look, we have to get back. It's not like making a speech. Or, it's we have to get back. We have to bring sanity. You know, a lot of people say, oh, you're conservative. It's not a question of being conservative. We're people with common sense, because it's really about common sense. It's not about you're conservative and you're this. But we're people that want to see borders and we want to see education. We want to see low taxes. These people, you're going to have a tax increase of four times more than you're paying right now with these maniacs. I've always said, you know, you have to lower taxes if you're going to be a politician. This is the only group that can raise taxes and they make it sound like it's a good thing. It's a bad thing. And, you know, we gave you the largest tax decrease in history, largest tax cut in history. And we were going to do something. We have more liquid gold under our feet than any other nation, more than Saudi Arabia, more than Russia. We were going to drill, baby, drill. And we were going to sell the oil to Europe and Asia and all over the place. We had them all lined up, and we were going to pay off our $34 trillion, and we were going to lower your taxes still further. And these stupid idiots come in, and they say, oh, we don't want to do that. But not least of all, we have a man here who I was very proud to endorse. I heard about him. I got to know him. He's actually one of the best mayors in the country, as far as I'm concerned. But I gave him an endorsement, and it went on to a tremendous victory. Hialeah Mayor Steve Bovo. You know Steve? And Steve, could you come up? He said he wanted to say something. Let's hear Steve. But he's a great, great, he's a great, great guy and a great mayor. Come on up, Steve, wherever you may be. Oh, he has a sign. I don't know. Whoa. Mr. President, we're so honored that you're here in the city of Hialeah. <clears throat> and I told you how honored we were that we were going to do right by you, because you've always kept your promise to the residents of this great nation, and we're appreciative. And I will be asking next week, the City Council of Ialea, some of the members of the City Council are here with us today. Our Council President is here. Our other Council members are here. And I will be asking them next week 
to, um, to be able to authorize and vote affirmatively as we name a street after you, Donald Trump Way. That's an honor. Great honor. I did not know that. Thank you very much. And he's a great mayor and a great council you have. So thank you all very much. Appreciate it. This is more than a campaign, what we've been doing for now seven years, eight years, when you add it all up and we started. This is a movement the likes of which this world has never seen before. The world has never seen a movement like this. Together, we appointed nearly 300 federal judges, a record, and three great Supreme Court justices. We took on communist China like no administration in history, bringing hundreds of billions of dollars pouring into our Treasury when no other president had gotten them to pay us even 10 cents. Nobody asked them for anything. They said they're a third world country. They're a developing nation. Well, so are we. We're a developing nation. They were given so much. I ended the NAFTA disaster, worst trade deal ever made, and replaced it with a brand new USMCA, the best trade deal ever made. That's United States, Canada, and Mexico. I canceled. Barack Hussein Obama's deal with the Cuban dictatorship and reimposed tough sanctions on the regime, and they were ready to do anything that our great Cuban Americans wanted. But then they came in and they just canceled everything and they put us back in the same weak position we've always been in. They were ready to do anything for our Cuban Americans and for me. I kept my promise, recognized Israel's eternal capital, and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. No other president. They went through many, many presidents. I also recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. And I think most importantly, but they did nothing with it, I withdrew from the disastrous Iran nuclear deal. But they did nothing with it. Under President Trump, we had peace through strength all over the world. I'm the only candidate who can make this promise to you that I will prevent World War III. You're going to have World War III if we're not careful. I was very honored, a very great head of a country. Viktor Orban, Hungary, very powerful. He fronts on both Russia and Ukraine, knows them both very well. He told me a lot of things, a great guy. But they asked him about two weeks ago, what should Biden do? What should he do? Because the world is blowing up. The world, the United States, everything's blowing up. He said, I have a very simple answer. You know, he's one of the toughest, smartest leaders of a country. Very tough. He didn't allow anybody into the country. He said, no, my country is for Hungarians. He didn't want people blowing up his shopping centers. He said, if you don't mind. But he said, my country is for Hungarians. But he said to the interviewer, Here's what Biden has to do. Resign from office, let Trump take over again, and you will have peace because everybody respected him or feared him. China, Russia, North Korea, everybody. And I was very honored by that statement. No, I think they did. They respected me and they respected our country. And we didn't have what's going. The whole world is going crazy now. And he actually said, we're not talking just the United States. The United States has such power if it wants to use it. But you know what? With every day, we're losing our power because we're losing our wealth. We're losing our strength. We're losing our spirit. We're losing our power with every day that goes by. And there'll be a time when we don't have any power. There'll be a time when we just, if, if things keep going like this, there's going to be a time very quickly, it's almost probably here, where we no longer have any power to help the world and help a lot of other 
A lot of great people that are dying. We have people dying all over the world right now. Nobody would have died in Ukraine. Nobody would have died in Russia. Lost many, many soldiers. Nobody would have died. Nobody would have died. Nobody in Israel. The attack would have never taken place. Would have never taken place. To protect our citizens from foreign threats, I will build state-of-the-art missile defense shields. And the Florida space industry will be a center of the action. So you're going to be very happy. You know, it's true. I want to build a dome because, you know, you have all these countries now and more and more they want the weapons and they got the missiles and they got everything. And we now have it down. Ronald Reagan wanted to do that. He was met with tremendous anger from Russia. I said, why are they angry if we want to build a shield? But that's the way it was. But we're going to build a shield. And we have a technology. You see it now working all the time. It shoots down needles in the sky. We have the greatest technology in the world, and we're going to build a dome right around this country, and we're going to save ourselves from some maniac that wants to start shooting at us, all right? And it means a lot of jobs, and that's one that I like a lot. I will end Joe Biden's war on American energy, and we will unleash our most powerful economic weapon. We are going to drill for so much oil. We are going to, as I said before, we are going to drill, baby, drill. We're going to bring down your costs. We're going to drink. We are bringing down your energy costs. We have the highest energy costs anywhere now. And, you know, energy is really what started inflation. And I don't know if you've ever heard, but inflation is called a country buster. You can go back 300 years and you can see why some great empires failed. Many of them failed because of the word inflation. You look at Germany, old day Germany, and you look at so many other countries. Inflation is a country buster, and it's busting our country right now, where bacon is five times more expensive than it was just a short while. Bacon! Even I say, I don't want any bacon, it's too expensive. <laughs> but we're going to get it under control, and we're going to do it fast, because we're going to have so much energy, and the prices are going to come down, and everything else is going to follow. Under crooked Joe Biden, the economy is floundering, families are suffering, and the largest growth industry in our country by far is government. It's the only thing that's growing. When I'm reelected, we will stop Joe Biden's inflation disaster, and we will rebuild the greatest economy in the history of the world. We'll do it. And unlike Ron DeSanctimonious, I will always protect Social Security and Medicare. He did not protect it. He wanted to do bad things to it for our great senior citizens. And when I get back into the Oval Office, I will totally obliterate the deep state. We started with Comey. We got rid of him. And we got rid of a lot of bad people. We will root out the corruption, bribery, and influence selling in our nation's capital. And we will start by exposing every last crime committed by crooked Joe Biden. Because now that he indicted me, we're allowed to look at him. But he did real bad things. We will restore law and order to our communities. And I will direct a completely overhauled DOJ to investigate every Marxist prosecutor in America for their illegal, racist, and reverse enforcement of the law. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto our children. And I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. No, no, we're going to make America great again. It's not going to take very long. Not going to take very long. And I will keep men out of women's sports. Is that okay? I will fully uphold the Second Amendment. I will continue to protect innocent life.
We will restore free speech, and I will secure our elections like they've never been secured before. And by the way, our goal on elections will be one day voting with paper ballots and voter ID. Is that okay? Now they'll really cheat. They'll get those machines humming. They'll say, we got to get this guy out of there. He's going to cause us to lose a fortune. Yeah, we want paper ballots. You know, they make paper now, watermark paper. That's uh, amazing. We want paper ballots. France did it. France just went to paper ballots, one day voting, voter ID. 36 million people. It took place at a winner. They had a loser. Everyone home, and the loser was unhappy. The winner was happy, and they already started the next fight. But you know what? They had no disputes. They had mail-in ballots a long time ago, and they turned out to be so corrupt. Anytime you have mail-in ballots, you have corrupt elections. I don't care what it is. It's anybody that wants it, they're corrupt. And that includes Republicans, by the way. Anytime you have Anytime you have mail-in ballots, you are going to have really corrupt elections. But until then, Republicans must win. We have to win so we can do this. And in conclusion, this is what we must do to restore our country to greatness. Together, we're taking on some of the most menacing forces and vicious opponents our people have ever seen. No matter how hateful or corrupt the communists and criminals we're fighting against may be, you must never forget this nation does not belong to them. This nation belongs to you. It belongs to the people with us tonight. That's how we won. This is your home. This is your heritage. And our American liberty is your God-given right. From Tampa to Tallahassee, from Pensacola to Sarasota, from Gainesville to Jacksonville to Miami. We inherit the legacy of generations of American patriots who gave their blood, sweat, and tears to defend our country and to defend our freedom. We stand on the shoulders of American heroes who crossed the oceans, blazed the trail, settled the continent, tamed the wilderness, laid down the railroads, dug out the Panama Canal. Nobody thought it was possible raised up the skyscrapers, won two world wars, defeated fascism and communism, and from right here in this beautiful state, launched our brave American astronauts to plant the American flag on the face of the moon. Together, they made America into the single greatest nation in the history of the world. But now, we are a nation in decline. We are a failing nation. We are a nation that is the highest inflation in 50 years, where banks are collapsing and interest rates are skyrocketing. Likewise, we are a nation where energy costs have reached the highest in our history. We are no longer energy independent or energy dominant. We were just there a very short number of years ago. We are a nation that is begging Venezuela and many others for oil. Please, please, please help us, Joe Biden says. Yet we have more liquid gold right under our feet than any other country anywhere in the world. We are a nation that just recently heard that Saudi Arabia and Russia will be reducing their output of oil and substantially increasing the price. And that threat is met by announcing that we will no longer be drilling for oil 
in large areas of Alaska and other parts of our country. We are a nation that is consumed by the radical left's Green New Deal, yet everyone knows that the Green New Deal is fake and will lead to our country's destruction. We are a nation whose leaders are demanding all electric cars, despite the fact that they can't go far, cost too much, and whose batteries and all of the other elements of those horrible cars are produced in China with materials only available in China. When an unlimited amount of gasoline is available inexpensively right here in the United States, but it's not available in China. And now we are a nation that wants to make our great army tanks all electric so that despite the fact that they will not be able to go very far, fewer pollutants will be released into the air of the territory that we are trying to conquer. And they also want to make our fighter jets with a green energy stamp losing 15% efficiency, but allowing us to keep our enemy's atmosphere crystal clear while we attempt to knock out their air force. We are a nation that ended oil exploration and production in the United States just as the price of oil reached an all-time high. What other country would do such a thing? We are a nation that surrendered in Afghanistan, leaving behind dead soldiers, American citizens, and $85 billion worth of the finest military equipment anywhere in the world. We are a nation that allowed Russia to devastate a country, Ukraine, killing hundreds of thousands of people, and it will only get worse. It would never have happened with me as your president, and for four straight years, it didn't happen. And China with Taiwan is next. We are a nation that has weaponized its law enforcement against opposing political parties something that we have never done before. We've got a federal bureau of investigation that won't allow bad election changing facts to be presented to the public and which offers one million dollars to a writer of fiction about Donald Trump to lie and say it was a fact, not fiction. Where Hunter Biden's laptop from hell was Russian disinformation and the FBI knew it wasn't but 51 intelligence agents said it was, and they knew it wasn't also. And a Department of Justice that refuses to investigate egregious acts of voting irregularities and fraud. And we have a man who is totally corrupt and the worst president in the history of our country, who is cognitively impaired, in no condition to lead, and is now in charge of dealing with Russia and possible nuclear war, which would be World War III and far more devastating than any of the previous world wars because of the weaponry that no one ever wants to think about, talk about, but it's there. We are a nation that no longer has a free and fair press. Fake news is all you get, and they are the enemy of the people. They refuse to discuss the Biden crime family, but enjoy covering false indictments of Donald Trump, who has done nothing wrong. We are a nation where free speech is no longer allowed and where crime is rampant and out of control like never, ever before. We are a nation that is allowing Iran to build a massive nuclear weapon and China to use the trillions of dollars it has taken from us to build a military to rival its own. And less than three years ago, we had Iran, China, Russia, and North Korea in check. They weren't going to do a thing against us. And everyone knows that, that was the fact. Now Russia and China are holding summits to carve up the world. And perhaps most importantly, we are a nation that is no longer respected or listened to on the world stage. We are a nation that in many ways 
has become a joke. We are a nation that is hostile to liberty, to freedom and to faith. We are a nation whose economy is collapsing into a cesspool of ruin, whose supply chain is broken, whose stores are not stocked, whose deliveries are not coming, and whose educational system is ranked at the very bottom of every single list. We are a nation where large packs of sadistic criminals and thieves are allowed to go into stores and openly rob them, beat up and kill their workers and customers, and leave with armed loads of goods, but with no retribution, where the authority of our great police has been taken, where their families and pensions have been threatened, and their lives would be destroyed for the mere mention of the words law enforcement. We are a nation where fentanyl and all of the other forms of illegal drugs are easier to get than formula for our beautiful little babies. A nation whose once revered airports are dirty. They're crowded. They're a mess. You sit and wait for hours and then are notified that the plane won't leave and they have no idea when they will. Where ticket prices have tripled, they don't have the pilots to fly the planes, they don't see qualified air traffic controllers, and they just don't know what the hell they're doing. We are a nation that has lost its confidence, its willpower, and its strength. We are a nation that has lost its way, but we are not going to allow this to continue. Three years ago, we were a great nation, and we will soon be a great nation again. It was the hardworking patriots like you who built this country, and it is the hardworking patriots like you who are going to save our country. We will fight for America like no one has ever fought before. With you at my side, we will demolish the deep state. We will drive out the globalists. We will cast out the communists. We will throw off the sick political class. And we will rout the fake news media. We will drain the swamp. And we will liberate our country from these tyrants and villains once and for all. We will win. Like those patriots before us, we will not bend. We will not break. We will not yield. We will never give in, we will never give up, and we will never, ever back down. Together, we will complete the mission. We will cross the finish line. We will give your support to everybody that is good, and you will support us in this primary. We will evict crooked Joe Biden from the White House. We will take back our country with a righteous and magnificent victory on Election Day 2024. This will be the most important election in the history of our country. The great silent majority is rising like never before. And under our leadership, the forgotten men and women will be forgotten no longer. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together, we will make America powerful again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Florida. God bless you all. God bless you all. Thank you, Florida.